you get the J. Frank Martin around the tree drummer. He was the instructor of the Charles T. Kirk Fife Drum and Bugle Corps, the best drum line in the world. And at the time in the 30s, but in the 20s, he taught his technique uh, around the tree where they had the arms out. And he would play this way. He, it, it was very low, six inches off the head. And they would play like this. The Ripperger brothers were, were the, um, uh, the two sons. Uh, Pop Ripperger ran the corps, but, but the two sons had seen the Connecticut style in the parades. And so they wanted to play the high Connecticut style in the parades. Yeah. And they said it looked better coming down the street. So they went to Sturtz's house to learn that technique. So that technique, of course, is, is, is with a high stroke. So you had much higher stroke than, than what J. Frank Martin was doing. Um, and it caught on. They used to come back from, from uh, uh, Sturch's house. They used to go by train, and they came back to Owl's Head Park in New York and taught New York mm -hmm. the Connecticut style. Yeah. The Muller technique is a revolutionary war technique almost. And the technique is basically to slow the learner down because they were in battle. They needed the, the rudiments to be slow. They needed them to be heard on the field correctly. And it was very important, otherwise men would get shot and maybe go the wrong way and the whole regiment would be killed. So um, the Sturtz, the uh, uh, Muller technique, uh, it was described to me by Sean Egan uh, uh, of, I think it was called the New York Posse. Uh, he said that it was like taking a and taking uh, sweat off your eyebrow. That that's that's what that's what yeah. you would do with the molar technique. Yeah. But as you can see, if you try to do this at 132 beats a minute, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. And the technique is more for uh, uh, a 110 type type ancient, uh, 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 you know, time, which is either 110 or 120 or the modern 120. Uh, but that's that's what it was there for. But in the in the war times, it was there to slow the learner down. With modern techniques, you know, people playing at 150, 60, 70, 180, 190 beats a minute, you're not going to use molar technique. Yeah. And for those who say that they're going to do that, um, that's just not a possibility. You don't you don't have radio stations today that play music at 160 beats a minute. Name one. Yeah. I don't know anywhere in the world except maybe drum and bass music, which is at 160. Other than that, I don't know of any radio station that could make money uh, with drum and bass. Uh, why they you know, would try molar technique to, in mo today's modern world with faster tempos makes no sense whatsoever. It is not more musical, it is archaic. Um, but anyway, uh, the molar technique uh, went extinct in the United States because of uh, the uh, uh, technique of Earl Sturtz and the techniques of the Sons of Liberty. Sturtz uh, had a higher uh, uh, grace note, probably a six inch or five inch grace note uh, for grace notes and flams, but everything was close to the body. It, wasn't, it was not the army around the tree, it was not the molar wild flailing away on the arms, it was, it was close to the body. And you can see the Chicago Cavaliers Drum Corps from the videos of the 1974, 75, and 76, they are uh, exemplified. Uh, even if you can see videos from the 60s, uh, from the mid 60s on, Cavaliers were taught by Frank Arsenal, who was taught by Sturtz, and and you'll see that technique. Um, from the standpoint of physics, it worked, and the drum, the drumming art form, took a big step up. In 1951, the Sons of Liberty were formed because in the corps they were in, the the uh, the brass line never showed up. They got mad about it. They quit. They formed a new corps called the Sons of Liberty. And it wasn't very long where they went to the bar after rehearsal and said, you know, why don't we teach these drum and bugle corps? There's so many of them. And the one guy who did teach drum and bugle corps from the Kirks was Lenny Hartman. Lenny, his son, uh, he, Lenny was a shyster. And so says Ed Olson and says some of the other people from the company of fifers and drummers who knew this guy. He was not, you know, he was a little shady, this guy. He is the father of Mickey Hart of the Grateful Dead. That's where that comes from. And Mickey Hart, I guess, had met his father. They didn't get along, I guess. There's a whole story, you have to research that story. But um, the Sons of Liberty drummers then said, hey man, we need to teach these drum corps. Mm. And so they started teaching. Les Parks taught the Hawthorne Caballeros. He, uh, he taught Garfield. Uh, Bobby Thompson was famous for uh, the Blessed Sacrament Golden Knights who uh, were the first ones to win drums in 1954 about one and a half points. 
and that changed history because at that point in time, a lot of the drum and bugle corps were using molar technique. That made molar technique go extinct. It went extinct. Nobody that I saw from the 1950s, 60s, 70s, or 80s in drum and bugle corps in America ever played molar technique. Nobody. Yeah. Nobody. Zero. Why are they trying to play it today? They say it's musical? No, it's not musical. They just have people that are teaching them that can't play a drum. That's what happened. And these people are, are college professors. They're, they're, you know, master's degree doctorates in music who are not rudimental drummers, who don't know the history of the art, and who never competed, never taught people to compete in the art. And they're not good players. They are not good adjudicators. And they try to use their pedigree of, of, a, of, a, of a college from somewhere in percussion to say that they should be judging these contests. And they had a very uh, detrimental effect on the history of rudimental drumming in America. Uh, they ruined it. And they did not ruin the Fife and Drum Corps because the Fife and Drum Corps would have nothing to do with them. Uh, in the Charles T. Kirk Corps, Gus Voller was at the rehearsals. Now I know this from Veronica Ben Sturtz. I know this from Alan Quitty. I know this from other guys that were in that core, and they said, yeah, Gus was at our rehearsals, we didn't allow him to play. Yeah. Why not? We didn't want him. Yeah. Why not? Well, Eric Perlew, who earned his way into the drum line in 1935 or 37, as a 15 year old, on the edges of the Ripperger Brothers kitchen table, had stated, he said, yeah, well, I saw Gus, and Gus was there, and he had a weird left hand. It was like a doorknob swinging or something. You can't have that. And then Quiddy said something to the effect, it might have been Perlew, um, you would never win an individual contest with molar style, ever. That's a pretty heavy comment. Uh, so, why would you then have these guys who were there and knew that Gus was never allowed to judge Fife and Drum Corps snare drum contest because they didn't think he was good enough? He was a timing judge. He never, with the comment that I have is that, and to, to my knowledge, he never judged a snare drum contest for Fife and Drum. Okay, if that's the case, why are they even having molar technique in the drum and bugle course today? For what purpose? It's musical? It's not musical. There's a guy, Bill, Jim Chapin. Jim Chapin, I've seen him give two clinics on, on molar saying, oh, there's fire in the muscles and you're playing loose. You can't have fire in your muscles and play loose. That is a contradiction. If you're going to have tight muscles, you are not going to play loose. Yeah. You're not going to be sitting, you know, that's tight muscles, that's tight tricep. I'm sorry, but with molar technique, it's not gonna happen. You're not gonna play loose. You're not gonna play clean at speed with that technique. It is not physically possible. And so I hear Chapin, you know, yap about this, and I don't think Mr. Chapin was ever in a drum and bugle corps or a fight for drum corps. I don't think he ever competed. I don't think he knows what he's talking about. And I think he's very detrimental, has a very detrimental effect on youngsters that might listen to him and say, oh, molar technique, this molar technique, that. If you wanna ruin yourself, play molar technique. Mm.